This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya, from the Fort Hall School of Government. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning. But we also take a look at some of the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 3rd of November 2022, and I am 2L. I'm AX. And I am 2J. And in case you missed today's headlines, here they are. In the Daily Nation, Ruto government takes final shape. Mm -hmm. The standard. Ruto's big gamble in PS choices. Mm -hmm. The star, Ruto to quash Uhuru's KU order, council quits. <laughs> the People Daily, Ruto's PS list sparks row over fairness. All right, we'll talk about that star headline in a bit, mm -hmm. but on to what has happened today. Because the EACC issued summons of appearance to David Murade, mm. Cyrus Jirongo, Francis Atwoli, and Kakamega Governor Fernandez Barasa, mm -hmm. all in connection with various corruption allegations. Now, President Ruto told country that he will deal with corruption. Now he is picking his targets one by one. Mm. But what is the difference between politicizing Uhuru's role in DPP and DCI cases and this? What is the difference between the dismissal of cases against Rigadi, Jumwa, Linturi, the mm -hmm. rest, and this? Is the EACC under pressure and the old guard is in trouble? Mm -hmm. Now the simple conclusion is the famous saying, to my friends, everything, mm -hmm. to my enemies, the law. law. But in politics, nothing is that simple. Mm -hmm. In our view, this is the beginning of Ruto consolidating power and silencing his detractors. Mm -hmm. We keep reminding the public that this is real politic at work. Mm. Mr. William Ruto is all about practical politics. Mm. And I've, as I've said before, morals and ideologi ideological honesty is for your pastor. Amen. <laughs> and because of that, we cannot waste time ascribing rights or wrongs to his politics. The cold, hard political truth is that this is his government and we're all just living in it mm -hmm. and make no mistake whatever kenya kwanzaa does will be above board and within the confines of the law their law mm -hmm. in fact a close lawyer friend of ruto name withheld told us just as much yeah. just days before the inauguration he said an MBS Ritz Carlton can be done in Kenya within the framework of the 2010 constitution. Now this statement went unnoticed and misunderstood by many. So for those who are not familiar, let me explain what this very daring and very intimidating tweet was warning us about. Yes. In early November 2017, nearly 400 of Saudi Arabia's most powerful princes billionaires and ministers were rounded up and detained in the luxury five-star Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Mm -hmm. This became the biggest and most controversial purge in the kingdom's history. Correct. The luxury detentions often started with a simple phone call, mm -hmm. summoning the targets for meetings with the prince or the king himself. Mm. In other cases, prominent businessmen were told to wait for a royal court advisor to join them. But it was all a trick to get them into custody. While there, the involuntary guests were told they had to sign away large parts of their assets in order to be released. <laughs> the detention involved psychological abuse yeah. and often torture. And the person behind this was then 32-year-old Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, also known as MBS. Absolutely. It later came out that the interrogators actually knew little to nothing about the misdeeds of these influential people. <laughs> but somehow, they found out everything they needed to know and more. Yeah. What MBS did was so daring and so bold that his wealthy prisoners knew he was not playing around. Yeah. So they offered everything up in fear. Mm -hmm. And MBS defended the crackdown as a necessary push to shock the Saudi elite out of their habits of corruption. Mm. And officials say that up to $107 billion was recovered and returned to the Saudi treasury. Mm. The detentions received support across all parts of Saudi society, and the crown prince remains popular today. Mm -hmm. What's the point here? Mm. Ruto gave us a warning through his proxy, name withheld. And he's executing through a proxy, 
called EACC. Mm. This is just the beginning. In fact, we predict that more of Uhuru and Raila's men will receive summons for crimes that had been swept away before. Mm -hmm. And just like MBS, Ruto will receive huge public approval. Mm. And now that Haji has professed his loyalty to Ruto, do not be surprised if DPP opens and closes cases with record efficiency. End of story. Welcome to the reign of William Ruto. Welcome indeed. You know, you know 2J, yeah. uh, MBS actually jailed the Prime Minister of Lebanon, Rafik mm -hmm. Hariri. What? And forced him, he told him, here, sign up your resignation letter. Yeah. And the guy flew back to Lebanon. The next day, it's true. The, the In day. fact, yeah, many of those 400 who were jailed were actually his cousins, his uncles. Yeah, his relatives. His, yeah they're all his relatives. My so, <laughs> be <Goodness>. warned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, switching tracks. Um, right. Yesterday, President Ruto released his list of principal secretaries, or PSs, and we at the Fort Hall School of Government feel that country is focusing on the wrong parts of this list. Mm. Instead of focusing on the massive gender and tribal disparities, country should focus on where the 14 Kalenjin PSs were appointed. Because here is where we see Ruto's deeper strategy at play. One that goes beyond simply ensuring Ruto's control of government and towards maintaining his position as Gemma's co-opted kingpin. Mm. But first, a little history. Right or wrong, every single president has favoured people of their own tribe. Yes. Yeah. One out of every three ministers in Jomo's cabinet was Kikui. Yes. In Moy's cabinet, it was one out of every five ministers that was Kalajin. Yeah. And under Kibaki, it was one out of every four ministers yes. that was Kikui. Yeah. So, to expect President Ruto to buck this trend would be like expecting a chicken to bark like a dog. The government now belongs to the Kalenjin nation. Mm -hmm. They are the captains now. Mm -hmm. And they are the captains because of how powerful the PS role could be. True. According to the job description posted by the Public Service Commission, PSs are responsible for the day-to-day -day running of government. Mm. This affords them an incredible amount of power to shape and direct government policy and action. This means that while CSs are primarily political appointments, mm -hmm. it is the PSs that wield all the practical power. Yeah. And past administrations have used the PS role to ensure that, the, the, to ensure that they control government. Yeah. For example, Jomo Kenyatta's first cabinet only had, you know, was mainly made of African ministers. Mm. But when it came to the PSs, there were 15 white PSs no. and only five Africans. Mm -hmm. In other words, the colonizers retained control over the early government yes. and they implemented policy in a way that benefited them. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the reality that makes the logic behind President Ruto's PS's choices quite clear. Yeah. Of the 11 ministries with Kalenjin PS's, six are headed by Gamma leaders. Mm. These are the officers of the DP, the National Treasury, the Interior, Lands, Water and Agriculture. Mm. Meanwhile, of the remaining five officers seconded by Kalenjin PS's, two officers are headed up by what I would like to call former Raila allies. Mm. These are the officers of the Prime Cabinet Secretary and the Ministry of Information, Communications and Digital Economy. Mm. Therefore, what should we make of these appointments? Mm -hmm. If indeed PSs wield all the practical power and CSs are mere politicians, then what does it mean for Ruto to favor Kalenjins as PSs? As I said in the beginning, this may go beyond the simple matter of control. Yeah. Might Ruto be trying to prevent the rise of another Gamma kingpin? Mm. <laughs> By appointing PSs loyal to Ruto and assigning them core functions of each ministry, mm -hmm. has Ruto empowered these Kalenjin PSs to check Gemma politicians when they start to get too big-headed? Mm. <laughs> Ruto knows that the path to the presidency goes through Mount Kenya. Ruto also knows that if he's not careful, Gamma will be his biggest headache. Yeah. And so what has he done? Brought his foes closer by pinning them against his friends and a hard place. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. I didn't know that about the 15 PSs under, well, Muzungu PSs <laughs> under Drummond. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic, fantastic stuff. Uh, one morning in the summer of 1976, the late Jenga Karume and the late Kehika Kimani were in an aircraft somewhere flying over Africa when Kehika woke up from his slumber. Once up, he turned to his friend Jenga Karume and asked, who will succeed Jomo Kenyatta when he dies? Jenga turned to him and said, Arab Moi, read your constitution. <laughs> Kehika, perturbed by Jenga's response, said, can't happen, will not happen. And so he devised a plot. Mm. He came up with the Change the Constitution movement, whose mm. aim was to amend succession laws and prevent Moi from succeeding Kenyatta. 
but Charles Jonjo stopped them in their tracks. Mm -hmm. When Jonjo got wind of what Kehika and Ko were trying, he called a press conference and told them it was treasonous to imagine, think, or encompass the death of the president. And just like that, Kehika, Jenga, and company stopped thinking of the Kenyatta succession, mm -hmm. at least publicly. Two years later, Jomo died. Why am I giving you this story? What would happen if there was a Kehika Kimani in the Luo Nation? Yeah. Put differently, what would happen in Luo Nyanza if anybody imagined a thought or encompassed politically succeeding Raila? Mm -hmm. The Luo Nation is the only nation that has an active political dynasty, yeah. the Odingas. The Kenyatta and Moi dynasties are politically dormant. Mm -hmm. And it may take another 20 or so years if they are to, uh, if they are to make a comeback. Mm -hmm. But what the Luo Nation must also remember is that dynasties are jealous institutions. Oh, yes. Put differently, successors in dynasties are born. Yeah. <laughs> Gideon Moi was born to succeed Arab Moi, mm -hmm. Uhuru was born to, su to succeed Jomo, mm -hmm. and Raila was born to succeed Jaramogi. Mm -hmm. If Uhuru attempted to make Raila boss, it is because Uhuru comes from the same type of political lineage as Gideon Moi and Raila Odinga. Yeah. If I'm right then, it means Babaman's successor will be from his seat. Mm -hmm. But if I'm wrong, then it means Baba doesn't really have a successor. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't have one, the Lord Nation must begin socializing their king in waiting. What's my point here? If anyone is to succeed Baba, they have, they have to have the guts of Kehika Kimani to imagine, think, or encompass the succession of Babaman. Yep. And as I conclude, please note, the Luo have had two kings from independence, mm. Jaramogi and Raila. Mm -hmm. Gema has had three kings, Jomo, Kibaki, and Uhuru. Yeah. The Kalenji nation has had two kings, Arab Moi and William Ruto. Mm. The common denominator in these three tribes uh -huh. is that every single transition since 1963 whose power was not given, it was taken. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. So true. Mm. So who's going to take it from <coughs> Baba? You didn't give us the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's for us to imagine, mm. encompass, mm. think. <laughs> so on that note, we have a three-part criteria that we use to judge the headlines by. We ask ourselves, is the headline topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking, and finally thoughtful or just plain lazy? Mm. I said we would revisit the star, right? Mm -hmm. Ruto to quash Uhuru's KU order. Council quits. Guys, English, right? <laughs> That's what I was thinking as well. It's so such a clunky sentence. It's a, it is. It's too con convoluted. We're going to toss the star immediately. Mm -hmm. People Daily, Ruto's PS list sparks row over fairness. I think AX has told us, forget about fairness, right? Forget about morality. Take that to your pastor. We toss the People Daily. Uh, the standard, Ruto's big gamble in PS traces. Again, uh, what gamble? Really a gamble. There's, no gamble. there's no gamble. There isn't. We toss the standard. I think that leaves us with the Daily mm. Nation. Ruto government takes final shape. That one. Indeed, we agree. He has his CSs down, he has mm -hmm. his PSs. Let's get to work. Uh, mm -hmm. There we have it. The Daily Nation gives us our winning headlines. Mm. On to the political pieces that we call cartoons, where we also have a three-part criteria. Mm. We ask ourselves, is this cartoon funny or speculative, mm -hmm. repetitive, or, um, you know what, we don't have the criteria <laughs> today. We're just going to see, do we like the cartoon or, or not? not? Or not. Like that. <laughs> That's it. That should be the criteria. The <laughs> <laughs> okay. To our mind, we start with the standard. The cartoon. <laughs> this, uh, this is uh, a cartoon depicting former DCI boss, uh, George Kinoti, tied to the stick ready to be burnt alive. Mm. Uh, and uh, for killing at the base of the stake, we see uh, arrogance, impunity, graft, forgery, and extrajudicial killings. Mm. And there is DPP Haji, you know, throwing uh, some, some fuel to all the skeletons. Mm -hmm. And there is a caricature of William Ruto watching happily. Mm. And the Kinoti seems to be negotiating, saying, good, good people, I'm open <laughs> to <laughs> some guest jobs. <laughs> Don't be fun of Kinoti. I don't know, I, I like Kinoti, but I mean, that's not the point. The point mm. is, uh, I think the criminal justice system has been overhauled. Not yeah. so much because they may have committed crimes, but um, for William Ruto to establish hegemony and do MBS things, he needs a whole new 
uh, team mm -hmm. and uh, Kinoti, Murade, Atuli, Fernandez. They're all examples mm -hmm. yep. of what could happen in the future. But it's not just Kinoti I think Ruta will go after. Mm -hmm. uh, like Putin did. And uh, MB, I, I liken William Ruto to MBS and Vladimir Putin. I think he's sharpening his knife for his allies. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, definitely. And give the credit to Haji, right? Yeah. I think if he did not step up and align himself immediately, he mm. was probably going to be next yeah. on the chopping block. Yeah. So also the cartoon is telling us he's aiding Ruto he's in all that needs to be done. Yeah, he's absolutely. a proxy in nature. Absolutely. Mm. absolutely. Great cartoon by Gado. Yep. Let's park that uh, while we look at the Daily Nation. All right, so in the Daily Nation cartoon today, we have a caricature of Meru Governor Kawira Wangaza. Okay. And her husband, bless his soul, is sitting on his, uh, sitting on her lap <laughs> with a guitar in hand um, now you as you can see um, on the other side of the table she's saying on one side of the table the side of the table are MCAs for Meru who have their backs turned towards her mm -hmm. and out in the middle of the table there is a giant chasm it's a giant crack on the table mm -hmm. what do you guys think of this cartoon uh, I, think, I think it's a depiction of Kenya as a joke <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, it's a joke. It is. It's a total joke. Yeah. I mean, just seeing the whole shenanigans on TV. Happening in Meru, yeah. Leading over 800,000 people. And this is the stuff you're going to, mm. you know, people playing guitar and all manner of shenanigans. But it's I think also the bigger conversation is this new class of politicians that have just been voted in. Absolutely. Right? Mm. And, it's, and it's not, you know, not no credit of their own. Um, I think the people spoke and that's why they were elected. Yeah. But when you have this caliber of people who are let me I need to find the right word to use. Let me tell you too. But I think they need to understand that there has to be respect in these kinds of offices. And to bring your cousin, your neighbor, your, your niece, husband. your husband, it's disrespectful. Let me tell you too, Jay, when we have said this many times, this thing called direct democracy, where the masses go and pick up their leader. Mm -hmm. That is, a th you, you'll never see a first world country with that kind of de uh, democracy. Yeah. Indirect democracies are the best. You choose your parliamentarians, parliamentarians choose make your them. laws, mm -hmm. and then they choose a leader amongst themselves, an equal yeah. amongst themselves. But this thing of the masses, the thing that you will see. Rubbish in, rubbish, rubbish out. out. So, all right, great cartoon. I think let's park it while mm -hmm. we finally look at the star. Oh. In the star, this is uh, Ozone. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, the cartoon does, it has two frames with mm -hmm. a time jump. It has then and now. On one side, we have Ryla telling the people about Mitumba and the people are angry. Mm -hmm. On the <laughs> other side, we have a new trade CS Moses Kuria also talking about banning Mitumba and the hustlers are shocked, shocked and <laughs> confused. Okay, people of Kenya, <laughs> I could have told you this for free, right? That anything that was vilified then is going to be, you know, wrapped up and rebranded today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Don't be surprised if we're going to see BBI back again with a different name. Mm -hmm. um, just today, Murkomen said that they're going to extend the SGR to Kisumu. Oh, the very same SGR that they were saying, you know, is a cause of our debt and inflation and whatnot. So I think it's just going to be mean, a long list. K Kenya Kwanza used to say there's nothing like big for Ilikusha. You yes. know, it, it was nothing. But of uh, probably seven out of ten events William Ruto has He's been to in Nairobi is a housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a housing Courtesy project. Of, of Uru Kenyatta. Kenyatta. Yes. And let me tell you, this is not it's got nothing to do with William Ruto. It's got everything to do with you hustler nation mm -hmm. and you quiz. Mm -hmm. You are light to and it's time you lay on your bed. What do they say? Sit on a pin? Yeah. Oh, okay. You made your bed. It's now time, time to lay your bed. That's the one. All right. Um, I think now we have to decide whether the cartoon is good or bad. <laughs> if we like it or if we don't. Um, I want to toss the star. star. Uh, not because it's not good, but because I think our analysis was superior. If yeah. I can say so. Um, with the Daily Nation, what do we think about the truth? I think we threw away that thing. Agreed. Mm. Toss. People daily, we don't even talk about it anymore. <laughs> I think that leaves us with the standard, Gado. Yes. Absolutely. Do we appoint that our winning cartoon? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. There you have it. We have a winning headline from the Daily Nation and a winning cartoon from Dado, our favorite at the standard. Mm -hmm. uh, today is 51 days into the Ruto administration. Mm -hmm. Be good Kenyans. Don't forget you can find us on your TV screens. We're on Pan to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Have a lovely evening. And we will see you tomorrow for Sunday Truth. Sabbath. Sabbath. Sabbath, Sabbath Truth. <laughs> you guys were paying attention. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Have a lovely evening. We will Bye. see you tomorrow. God bless.